statins are among the most prescribed medications globally yet they remain controversial are they truly life saving or are they overhyped one group believes that statins have numerous side effects and should be avoided in contrast another group assumes that taking statins will completely prevent heart attacks or strokes in today's video i will clarify three key aspects of statins number 1 the real extent of benefits they provide number 2 the actual risk of side effects and number 3 the right way to use statins effectively statins are medications primarily designed to lower ldl that is bad cholesterol and triglycerides they work by blocking an enzyme in the liver called hmg coa reductase which plays a key role in cholesterol production by reducing cholesterol levels statins help lower the risk of plaque build up in arteries ultimately preventing heart attacks and strokes statins are prescribed for two purposes number 1 is primary prevention that is for individuals without heart disease but with risk factors of heart disease such as high cholesterol blood pressure or diabetes second is secondary prevention meaning for those individuals who have already a heart attack or stroke to prevent recurrence to gauge the actual benefit of any drug it is essential to understand a few concepts number 1 is relative risk reduction rrr in short this frequently cited metric especially on social media and in lay press can be misleading when considered in isolation for example if 10 out of 100 people experience a heart attack without drug a but only 5 out of 100 do so with drug a the rrr is 50% a headline such as drug reduces the risk of heart attack by 50% in a newspaper or on tv may sound dramatic but it does not provide the full picture to understand the impact of a drug another parameter called absolute risk reduction arr is crucial because absolute risk reduction offers a more practical and realistic picture let us use the same example a drug prevents 5 heart attacks per 100 people resulting in a absolute risk reduction of 5% after 5 year of use which gives a entirely different picture of relative risk reduction of 50% this means that 5 out of every 100 treated individuals benefit while 95 out of 100 take the medication without driving direct benefit over the same period while experiencing the side effects for a lay person even these terms can sound technical the real world benefit can be better understood through the concept of number needed to treat nnt in short nnt tells us how many people need to be treated for one person to benefit in the same example if 5 out of 100 people benefit it means 20 people needed to be treated over 5 years to save one person from having an heart attack or stroke therefore nnt is 20 It is also worth pointing out that studies quoted in the lay press often highlight the benefit observed at the highest doses used for the longest duration which may not reflect real world prescribing practices. Now let us come back to statins and see how much they benefit in primary as well as secondary prevention. Low dose statins have an NNT of 6200 for 5 years which means 60 to 100 patients needed to be treated 
for five years to prevent one person for having a cardiovascular event. In diabetes where cardiovascular risk is higher, the NNT is 40 to 60. At high doses, we have a slightly better NNT that is 50 to 70, but with a higher side effect risk. That is why high doses are best reserved for high risk individuals. Secondary prevention. Statins are more beneficial in preventing recurrent heart attacks or strokes. Low dose statins have a NNT of 40 to 50 over 5 years. At high dose NNT is 30 to 40 over 5 years. For secondary prevention high dose is preferred if tolerated. Apart from having relatively high NNT there are other ongoing controversies regarding statins including the actual number of years they add to life with prolonged use and whether their benefit stems primarily from cholesterol lowering effect or due to other mechanisms such as antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects or due to their favorable effect on endothelial function. These aspects deserve a dedicated discussion which we will cover in a separate video at another time. In clinical trials, 5 to 10 percent of patients report mild issues such as headache, dizziness, tiredness, weakness, muscle pain or digestive discomfort. Diabetes risk is another hotly debated issue. Overall, the absolute risk with statin is low. Over 5 years, the absolute risk is approximately 1 to 2.5 percent which also depends upon dose used and other diabetes risk factors a person is having before starting the treatment. The fact is only 0.2 to 0.5 percent of patients on statins may develop diabetes annually. Fasting blood glucose levels can rise slightly in individuals with diabetes an average increase of around 7 mg per deciliter has been noted. The third type of side effects which are in news these days are cognitive effects which consist of memory loss or confusion. However, actual extent of these side effects is poorly understood and various clinical trials have given conflicting results. Less common side effects include hair loss, insomnia and immune or allergic reactions. Serious side effects like rhabdomyolysis meaning muscle tissue breakdown are extremely rare. These occur in less than 0.1% of cases. Most side effects are dose dependent with high doses increasing the risk by 2 to 3 times compared to low doses. Statins are neither inherently good nor bad. They are tools. Their effectiveness depends on proper use. When prescribed appropriately, they can save lives by reducing cardiovascular risks. However, incorrect or unnecessary use may lead to avoidable harm. Number 1. Statins are more effective for secondary prevention preventing complications in those with existing cardiovascular conditions than for primary prevention that is preventing first time cardiovascular events. And third, their NNT is relatively on the higher side. In such a scenario, balancing side effects and benefits is the key. Statins are neither the miracle cure glorified by some healthcare professionals nor as harmful as portrayed by unqualified self-proclaimed experts on social media. The decision to use statins should be personalized based on a thorough evaluation of an individual's risk factors and overall health situation. If this video helped you, like, share and subscribe to Diabetes Sutra for more health related insights. See you soon with another video. Stay happy, stay healthy.